Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live with Susan from Enlightened Hire. We're going to talk all about recruiting and hiring today. So let me make sure I can do this invite. Oh, looks like I can. Super easy. Thank you, Mighty Networks. So super excited. I have a couple questions myself to ask Susan about recruiting and hiring. And here she is. Hello, Hi, my friend. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, just trying to figure out how I'll be able to share my screen without the Canva presentation taking over. You know, it's like... <laughs> oh, gosh, I know, I know. And can you share your screen? Oh, yeah, you can. Can I? Okay, hopefully I, mean, I can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see at the bottom. Yep, very good, very good. Kim, thank you for having me today. Thank I you appreciate it. Here. I love uh, always uh, talking to you and always talking to salon owners. Uh, let me know if my glare is too much on my glasses. I don't have, I'm just now getting into, you know, needing glasses. It's like, I'm just trying to make that sort of <laughs> all this time on the computer. I'm like, oh yeah, no, we're here. <laughs> well, if you look back at every single one of my uh, my lives, I have the googly eyes from the ring light on my glasses. So you know what? <laughs> Just part of it when you wear glasses, I think. Well, yeah, I, I appreciate that. So bear with me if you guys can't hear me. Uh, my name is Susan Bosch. I specialize in salon industry, hiring and recruiting. I have um, actually three different platforms that um, we work with salon owners and salon pros. Um, let me give you a little background on me. So I've been in the industry for uh, 28 years since 1995. And, um, you know, most of my time has been spent as a salon professional. Um, however, I was a salon owner for five years um, way back in the day. I'm 47 now and I was a salon owner at 25 years old. And so um, I find that my journey as a salon owner really isn't all that different than um, what your typical salon owner's journey is, which is you have a good idea. Um, you think you you know want to be a business owner. You think, oh, my gosh, I can do it better than the last guy. And you jump in and then there you are. And so I had my salon for five years. Um, I successfully sold my salon um, after five years because I found out I just didn't have the temperament to manage um, people and be a salon owner. However, um, I did stay in the industry. Um, I moved to New Zealand for a year um, to do hair. I just wanted something totally different. I packed up my dogs and we went to New Zealand and I lived there and it was really amazing and difficult. And, you know, it's interesting because overseas, you know, of course, salons are different and people are different and their structure is different, but really it's kind of all the same thing. You know, a lot of the salon dynamics and, you know, what people want and need and prefer really are, they, they translate across all countries, all languages. It's really interesting how similar it was yet, of course, a little bit different. So I came back from New Zealand and I um, actually worked as a manager for the salon owner that I sold my salon to. Um, and then I ended up moving into a salon suite. And anyway, I was in a salon suite for a couple of years and life changes happened. And I just have always had this idea that um, I felt salon owners really need better visibility. Salon owners need to be able to effectively recruit and um, they need sort of that um, sometimes personal guidance as do salon professionals. And so it, let's see, uh, about five years ago, I started a business called Salon Spa Connection um, in Kansas City, my hometown. And so what I did was really just kind of offer myself up as a kind of a go-between. And so I would get to know salon owners, I would get to know salon pros, and we would sort of, um, you know, hash out really what worked best for them, um, what they wanted, what they needed, what they preferred. And this was like a pen and paper business when it started. And so um, kind of gained traction, gained traction. The business morphed a little bit. I had you know, people were reaching out saying, I just want like a job listing. Can you give me a job listing? I don't need that personal stuff. And so I have had to adapt and grow and change a lot. 
since spring of 2018. Um, but this journey has been incredible. You know, I have had the wonderful opportunity of really getting to know, you know, not only salon owners and what they want and they need, but salon pros, because um, that's sort of the elusive unicorn, right? The, the salon pro, what do they want? Where are they looking for opportunity? How do they find opportunity? What makes them pull the trigger? And what is it that keeps them long-term? And so these are things that I have learned um, on a personal level over the last five years. And I had to transition my business a little bit to more of a digital offering because um, the demand was so high and it was really hard to sort of track and you know communicate with so many people at a time. Kansas City's got what, 3 million people or so. So, you know, it is a larger metropolitan area. Of course, it's not as big as, you know, New York or Boston or, um, you know, LA, any of those. But, um, you know, oh, I knew I was onto something. And so I scaled my business um, to offer a software program called Enlighten Hire, which is a hiring and recruiting platform. We'll get into that later. But I am here to talk to you today about successful hiring and recruiting because I, this is my specialty. Like this is something I feel very, very strongly about. And I feel like, you know, the things that I know um, on a mass level, seeing all these different salon owners and salon pros and really getting to know um, what they're doing, how they're taking action and what the heck's going on. I just want to share that with you and thank you, Kim, for inviting me today to do so. And so I'll just, I've made a little presentation. Let's see if I can, uh, Let's see if I can, can I share just say one thing. I yes. learn something new about you every single time that we're together. Oh, really? Okay. Good. I didn't know you were in New Zealand for a year. So, <laughs> yes. And that, you know, I love to talk about that experience and I, I'm happy to answer questions about it because it really was, you know, New Zealand is quite different. It is the most beautiful place in the world, but it is a socialist environment and um, very, very kind of different attitude towards a lot of things in our industry. But uh, anyway, that, I mean, that lent itself to me having an even broader understanding of our industry and the way people work and the way things work, you know, outside of the United States. And so anyway, here is my little presentation. Let's see if I can do this effectively. Let me know, Kim, because I may not be able to see you. Okay. Um, uh, I did tell everybody they can put some questions in the chat too, if they have. Yep. Absolutely. Questions. Yep. I'm here to answer questions. Um, if this does show all of my tabs open, that tells the real story of what my life is like. <laughs> oh, let's see if I can do this full screen. Look at that. Yeah, I can see I can see you. Okay. I mean, and I can see your screen. Can okay. everybody else see it? Just give me a little thumbs up or something in the chat. Make sure that we can see it. Everybody can see it. Okay, very good. All right. Um, can you see it now if I go full screen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, great. Okay, so hiring and recruiting, one of the biggest pain in the butts of our industry. That's what I'm here to talk to you about today. These are my um, social platforms. We we had a couple going and we kind of consolidated down to um, Salon Spot Connection on Facebook and Instagram. It's great to follow because um, we do post a variety of things. We post our owner's opportunities. Um, and it's really interesting to me. I have a wonderful young person handling our social media and um, I kind of let her take it and run with it. And sometimes she posts things that I'm like, why in the world um, are we posting this? Like we just had one literally. And, um, you know, she's young. And so she understands kind of what people are thinking um, on the younger scale. And so anyway, it's, it's interesting to see like how many people like stuff, how many people comment on stuff and what they do. Anyway, that I just started a TikTok channel and that is very interesting that's an interesting platform i've been a little bit resistant to it but um i do find that there's a lot of salon pros on TikTok more and more uh, especially as the volatility of facebook and instagram kind of take shape you know we don't really know what the future of those platforms are uh, three different websites salon spot connection and light and hire and then i have a whole recruiting course and that is salon recruiter secrets.com all right let's see here let me see if i can so successful hiring and recruiting, there we go. There are four stages of successful, uh, basically successful recruiting. And then of course, recruiting goes right into hiring, right? It's, it's two different things yet. They both um, are very, very similar. So the first 
stage of successful recruiting is awareness. This is super, super big. Awareness is uh, a multi-tiered thing, right? So awareness means people are finding you. How are they finding you? So that means where does your business live, right? So if you um, do not have any online assets or if you have a bunch of online assets, that those are places that you live. Um, can they find you? That's a big one, you know, um, visibility truthfully is everything. Um, and I know it's a competitive space. However, um, visibility is something, it's kind of one of those long, ongoing efforts, right? Um, you, you want to be seen by not only clients, but you want to be seen by your ideal hires. And so it's really, really important just to continue to have that mindset of being found and being visible. Um, what relationships do you have that are producing results? And so that is um, a multifaceted thing. And so awareness can come from, you know, obviously your online assets, but your relationships too um, are key to awareness. So that means, you know, are you going to schools? Um, are you talking about your business to even um, friends and family, neighbors, you know, people in the grocery store, um, those are all relationships. And even though, you know, we're kind of in that world of where we're kind of being sold all the time, um, it never hurts to talk about your business in any um, social circle, truthfully. Like I can't tell you how many times throughout my life, and I'm quite sure that you have um, experienced this as well, said, you know, somebody says, what do you do for a living? It's like, oh, I'm a salon owner, I'm a hairstylist. And immediately they either say, oh, I know, you know, my sister's a cosmetologist or, you know, I really need my hair done. Those are all great conversation starters. Those are relationships that can be fostered and built and you kind of never know where they're going to go. But being consistent with that awareness um, on every single channel is super important. Um, platforms that you advertise on. So advertising doesn't mean necessarily paid advertising. Advertising means, um, you know, where are you posting uh, job listings. So obviously you can do that for free on a lot of different platforms. Obviously you can register for free for our system as well, but where are you advertising on? Like I see a lot of salon owners um, think things like Indeed, right? Okay. Indeed. Yeah. Sometimes we get people from Indeed. Sometimes we don't, but if you continue to go to the same platforms that do not produce results. So like Indeed, or ZipRecruiter, or Craigslist. If you are consistently not getting results from these platforms, it's time to think about something else. Um, what efforts are you making to be visible? So this is also big, right? You need to be visible. How do you get visible in the digital age? Um, search engine optimization on your website. That's a big one. So what that means is on the back end, um, you or someone um, that built your website is putting in those keywords and keywords can be found um, in a variety of places. Um, I really highly recommend you Google after this uh, presentation, I highly recommend you Google um, salon jobs near me, hair salons hiring near me and see what pops up. You will find that some salon owners have done search engine optimization for their website for hiring, which is huge. And I think it's great when I see salon owners pop up, you know, obviously you're going to get a lot of Indeed and that kind of stuff. But when you see actual salons pop up in the search, that's huge. Um, so that's one way you can be more visible. Another way you can be more visible is using those keywords and using that language on your social assets. So most of us have at least the Facebook page. Facebook also gets picked up by Google. And so when you post about hiring or e even in your um, description, you're going to get boosted up in that search. Now it does take a little bit, so it's not an immediate effect type of thing, but fo focusing on that visibility is really important. And so figuring out what your particular keywords are, you know, so those would be, um, you know, who are you hiring? So are you hiring hairstylists? What are you, a salon? Are you a spa? Are you a barber shop? Um, those are key words. Um, the words job, hiring, employment, all keywords. And one of the biggest keywords that you have is your local area. And that means like even down to your neighborhood. And so um, using that type of language, like if you say salons hiring in Boston, way too broad. 
right? Way, way, way too broad. And so you want to really nail it down to the specific area that you are in. And that means using hashtags on Instagram. That means using those language in um, posts on Facebook, um, on your website. And so that is um, one way you can be uh, more visible. But the key to being visible is consistent effort. All right. So the second tier is interest. So once you have created awareness for your business, it, whether it's um, getting clients or recruiting, it doesn't matter. Awareness is kind of the same. Um, getting clients actually is very, very similar to recruiting because you're speaking to, you know, what people want, need, and prefer, whether they're looking to get their hair done or whether they're looking to work for you. So once you've done a great job in creating awareness, um, you need to generate interest. Sometimes I see a lot of people, you know, really they're pretty good about the awareness, right? Um, for example, we have a large Facebook group in Kansas City that is, um, you know, specifically for our industry. And there is one salon owner who posts, I mean, every single week, pretty much that she's hiring which I think is great. I think, you know, that being consistent is really good. Keeping showing up is really good. However, she's she's kind of nailed the awareness, right? At, at least in that platform. But it's not very interesting. Like nobody really is taking action on this. Nobody is like, nobody's engaging with it. It's the same post over and over and over again. And people just, boo, right? It's like, bleh. I'm, I'm bored with this. This is the same thing. You're not reaching anybody new. You're not speaking to people. And so for interest, that means why should someone work with you? And so whether it is a job listing, um, a Facebook post, Instagram post, people need to understand why they would want to work for you rather than the salon down the street. Um, what do you offer? This is big. Um, a lot of times I see owners, you know, when they're posting about their opportunities, um, their offerings are very, very unclear. Um, there's a lot of scattered sort of words. There's a lot of scattered um, CTAs, which is, um, you know, call to action. So what do you offer? Like really do some soul searching about your values your culture and put that foot forward because that is your offer. It's not necessarily, oh, you know, per, uh, commission percentages or rental prices. That's not necessarily it. It is literally your offer. It is what you're bringing to the table for salon professionals. And are you speaking to your ideal hire? So this is a big one, right? we a lot of times we're just posting we're just like maybe a little desperate to hire or maybe we're just trying to figure it out and we're just sort of you know like shotgunning it right and um like anybody hey you know hey i'm hiring hey we've got extra chairs hey the salon's beautiful but the failure to understand of who actually works best for you meaning your ideal hire will not generate interest and so you need to think about you know write down some of your values and what you would like to see reflected in people who are applying with you, because that is going to generate interest. If you understand who your ideal hire is, where they are, and how to talk to them, that is going to generate interest. Is your business current with the workforce demands? This is another one that I see. Um, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but there are um, salons out there that no one is interested in. And the reason that no one's interested in them is because their offer is not current with workforce demands. And so let's say, um, I don't know, you you require a 40 hour a work week, okay? That's something that is not current with the workforce demands. It's, it's kind of rare to find that, but that's just an example I wanna use. And so if people know that walking into your salon, they're going to be working 40 hours a week, and this is of course in a commission type of environment, um, that is not current with the workforce demands. Um, it is not current with the workforce demands. If you have, this is a big one, I see this a lot. So open concept booth rental salons. Those, you know, that business model, has suffered probably more um, than any of them because of salon suites, because, um, you know, salon suite, you can just escape the drama, right? Um, it, it seems like a great opportunity. So open concept booth salons, actually, I think they have to work harder 
um, because they have to provide something that the suites do not. And so that is a workforce demand. Why would someone choose your salon over a salon suite? Well, in an open concept booth in a salon, a lot of times you can offer support. You can offer, you know, towels, things like that. You can offer a website. So just understand, especially in your particular area, where is the workforce demand? Um, one of the biggest workforce demands and is now and will always be is new graduates. Um, and I see a lot of people overlook new graduates because they've either been burned or they don't want to put in the effort. But that is an area where um, I think that a lot of salon owners, there's actually there's a lot of resources now for um, hiring young grads, like as far as like, well, there's digital um, assistant programs. There's just all kinds of resources out there for salon owners who are willing to hire students uh, and train them and grow them. And so that is a workforce demand. That's a big one. Lots and lots and lots of new graduates and not enough places to go. All right. So the final thing with interest is what do applicants see when they find you? So let's say you have generated that awareness. Um, you have brought them in to either your website or your social media, but are you generating interest? So what are they finding when they're seeing you? Are they seeing a bunch of just words? Are they seeing visuals? Are they immediately understanding who you are and what you offer? And if the answer is no, you need to focus on that. So awareness. Okay. You got that? Great. Next stage is interest. What are you doing to keep them interested? What are you doing to generate interest? Because you've got about three seconds to do that. Okay. The third stage is action. So once you've generated awareness and they are interested enough and they're kind of hanging around and they're looking at you, then action. So what call to action are you providing for applicants? So this is something I see a lot. Um, people say, DM me, call me, email me. And I, literally every single post is different. Um, I would give them all of the options. You know, one of the things we do with the software is we allow everybody to have a link because the clear call to action is just a little lost um, sometimes with salon owners. And so do not leave them wondering how to get a hold of you. You need to put it all out there. You need to put your phone number. You need to say DM me and you need to put your email address. And if you have an account with us, put your link because there's a lot of salon pros looking who just want to click that link and be connected with you. How do they apply? Is there a clear place for them to apply? This is one of the things I see a lot with salon owners um, um, on their website. So a page, right? So you've got a homepage, you've got maybe a stylist, you've got maybe a booking link, but do you have a page where if somebody finds your website, which is a good thing, right? And they're maybe somewhat interested in working with you. Do you have a page that talks about what your opportunities are, who you are, who fits best, and for an area for them to apply. You'd be really surprised. A lot of salon owners don't have that. That's really, really key. And it's also an opportunity to optimize your website for hiring. So if you do not have a place to apply, put that high on your priority list because if, if a salon pro comes to your website <clears throat> or if they come to your social media and they're not understanding how to apply, then you've lost right? So number one, get somewhere for them to apply. Um, I wouldn't use a super simple form, but I wouldn't use a really long complicated form either. So what is the motivation for them to apply? You know, why would they take action? So you generated that awareness. They've kind of got some interest, but then they're at that action stage. So what is their motivation to apply? And I can say right now that if you are talking all about yourself, um, you've lost them. So you need to talk about them, what they get, what they will be doing, and what they'll be receiving. And so if you can take this from kind of an applicant's point of view, that is a much better approach. And it's going to get them to take action a lot quicker than if you're just like, yeah, we're this, we're that, we're this, we're that. Okay, some of that's great, but you really need to be talking to them. <clears throat> what do your applicants see when they apply? Do they understand what they're getting into? Do they know if you are booth rental or if you are commission? Do they know why they would be working for you? You have to look at 
your opportunities, your job postings, your website from their eyes. This is something I do all day, every day and actually offer a audit um, because I like for salon owners to understand where the applicant is coming from, what they're seeing um, for your opportunities. And so try to really um, see it from their point of view. You know, what are they seeing when they come to apply with you? Are you losing them at the action stage? Are you sending mixed messages? Are you showing them where to apply? And are you showing them who you are and why they should work for you? Do your applicants understand who you are and what works best? That kind of goes into the rest of the stuff that I have talked about, but what works best, that's a great like two sentence um, thing to put on your website and to put on your social media posts. What works best in your salon? Immediate, they understand. Should they take action or shouldn't they? So the final stage after we've generated awareness, interest, action, the last stage is acceptance. That's when they say yes. That's where we all want to be, right? We want to have that successful journey. Um, sometimes we get lost somewhere in that journey, but once we get to acceptance, this is hiring, right? The rest of that is recruiting. And so acceptance is what made them say yes. You need to understand why the people that work for you work for you. That's a big one. So if you're not really sure on what to put on job postings or what to put on your website. You need to talk to the people that work for you and find out why they enjoy working for you. A lot of times you're gonna get all of your language from them. Um, did you lose them in the interview process? I see this quite a bit. So once you get to that acceptance stage where they're going to make that decision, yes or no, or sometimes there's a maybe in there, right? So the maybes and the no's, we need to figure out what happened, right? Were they not clear on what you offer? Were they not clear on what they wanted? A lot of times that happens too. Um, the interview process, like I've, I've, I've heard applicants, they, they tell me a lot, right? And so the interview process, a lot of times, um, like when, when are you giving the interview? Are people in the salon? You know, are, are you having them come into an empty salon? Are you including in the interview process, maybe an hour or so for them just to hang out, talk to some of the other stylists, you know, where, in the interview process, if you're losing them, are you losing them? And what are the expectations on hiring? So expectations are big, right? Before anybody says yes, a clear understanding of what you expect of your hire and what they can expect of you is super important because this is one of those things that is a barrier to acceptance is expectations. If they're not clear and they don't really understand, they may feel either confused or ambivalent about your opportunity. If they're very clear, if you're very clear and they don't want you, that's good. Then no one's time has been wasted and you learn something from every single person. Are you following up with applicants who you interview and talk to because I know there's been a lot of salon owners who it's like, oh, I interviewed this, you know, one hairstylist and she seems super interested. And then I didn't hear back from her. Um, understanding why that happened. Now, sometimes there's not a good reason, right? Sometimes they're just jerks and they're just like literally talking to everybody and trying to find their best deal. But if you can understand why um, you were chosen over, they didn't choose you that's super, super important. And to keep that relationship open, because here's the deal, is a lot of times salon pros will go work for somebody else and they will figure out, this is not something that I really want. Um, they said yes to that salon owner for whatever reason, you know, maybe we don't understand what it is. Maybe they offered them something great, who knows? I don't know. But keeping that relationship and that communication open is super important. Do not get butthurt about it. Keep that you know, keep communication, say, hey, I'd love to understand why you decided not to choose us just so I can improve and I can understand maybe what salon pros want. And they're going to be flattered, right? A lot of times if you just leave that wide open, say, I'm, I really value your opinion and I'd like to know what you think. Um, you'd be really surprised at what you learn. But if you're not following up with these people and if you don't understand why you weren't chosen, you are at a serious disadvantage. What are you doing to retain, 
grow and nurture your hires. So they said, yes, great. So what happens next, right? Um, what does retention look like for you? Um, what does nurturing those relationships um, look like for you? Are you communicating with them? Are you letting them know that you um, are someone that you, they can talk to? Um, or do they feel intimidated? Are they having to go through a manager to get to you? Are you in the salon? You know, what is the scenario there um, that they can communicate with you and that you both have an understanding and open communication about what each side needs? Because these things that build up, right? You get somebody's pissed off about something, sort of builds, builds, builds. And if there's no communication in that building, a lot of times it breaks. And so open communication, understanding what type of support um, your new hire or your new booth, booth renter needs is super important. A once a month check-in, I think just a little quick coffee date, um, maybe quarterly have a little longer, maybe an hour or so, whatever that looks like for you. Um, maintain that communication, especially with your new hires, because they a lot of times will get into stuff if they weren't clear on who you were or if they weren't clear on what they wanted and expected sometimes they end up leaving. And so fleshing through that stuff, just so there's no more turnover or the turnover is reduced is really, really important. And what are you doing to nurture these people? You know, whether it is a booth rental salon, a lot of times people think, well, booth rental salons, we don't need to really do anything. We don't need to nurture them. And that is not true. You always give them the opportunity. Um, one of my best friends owns a open concept booth rental salon. Um, in Kansas City, and she has no trouble hiring um, because she is able to attract people. And one of the things she does is she provides a couple free things like free gloves, free foil, you know, laundry, a couple of just those little tiny amenities. And she does things like she has Botox parties. This is an open concept booth room salon, right? She doesn't have to do any of this. She can literally just make sure the place is clean, make sure it's compliant and never even be there. But she doesn't do that. She provides a photo shoot. She provides business cards. You know, so that is all things that even if the booth runner doesn't want it, to have the offer, they're going to feel far more valued, right? Because it's like, oh, well, I get this from this salon. Or she really values that we're here. And so nurturing your hires um, is kind of the same across the board. It's a little different for commission and booth rental, but making sure that you are nurturing them and you are understanding what they want and what they need and communicating with them is going to definitely help with your retention. So that is the four stages. And these are my contact numbers. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you have any questions for me, this is, uh, I am an open book. I'm here to chat with you. You know, we do all kinds of hiring and recruiting services. Uh, my software allows for free registration for our salon owners. And because we have all these applicants that are looking for new salon homes literally across the U.S. and Canada. So feel free to reach out to me on social or visit our website. Um, we've got all kinds of free stuff. So freebies, downloads. Um, again, you can reach out on socials. We have in our um, Facebook and Instagram, we've got a multi-link bio, which if you don't have one of those, huge, right? Big, big, big. I know Kim has one. And so it's going to give you all these separate options. Our freebies are there. A lot of information is there. Um, we blog, we do all kinds of stuff. So anyway, that is what I have for you guys today. Let me see how I can stop sharing my screen. I think. Of course, okay. I have a couple questions for you. Too. Oh, good. Okay. Hold on. Let me stop sharing my screen. <laughs> okay. Good luck. I've never done that on this platform. <laughs> Oh, no. It just won't. It won't let me do it. It won't okay. let you do it. Hold on. May, I think I might have it figured out. Okay. Stop sharing. Woo! Too fast. <laughs> I just closed up our chat, too. So let me just open that back up. Okay. So first off, I, I want you to tell them exactly what Enlightened Hire is and how it works. Because I, what I talked about this morning in my live in the Facebook group was you offer every salon owner one free applicant, but like, what does that exactly mean? 
and you know our vip members you have so graciously given them 20 applicants which is a 350 dollars value which is amazing um i i think one of our vip members have signed up i'm not sure everybody has yet but talk a little bit about that and what the, like what your process is because your process is totally different from everybody else's like you get down to the nitty gritty which is how you get into that matchmaking mm -hmm piece of it so that you don't get those bad hires, hopefully, you know? Well, you know, I, I tell everybody there's no guarantee on people. <laughs> and that is both sides, right? Applicants and salon owners. So Enlightened Hire is a custom software program designed by yours truly, and it is basically hiring software. And so what it allows um, not only salon owners to do, but salon pros do is, is be very, very specific on what works best for you. Because one of the things that I run into very often is that inability to be clear. And honestly, there is so much to think about and it's really great to have it in one space. And so in Light and Hire, um, what happens is if you're a salon owner, you go and you register for free. Registration does take about 15 minutes um, and you're gonna answer several questions. And the questions are used um, for us as admins on the back end. And then once you get an applicant, to determine whether this person is a good fit for you or not. And so that is each question is calculated against each other. And so you're gonna know as a salon owner, you know, when you get an applicant, okay, this person is a good fit in these areas. They're not such a great fit in these areas. Which one for me personally are deal breakers? And so applicants actually get the same information. So you get a basic report, right? And so that's an overall score. Then you get a couple, couple other reports after that. But truly, it is, um, it's an ability for us to be able to send applicants to you because we do have applicants coming in from all over the U.S. It's crazy to me um, how much they like the software and how many of them are registering. I mean, like right now we have, oh my gosh, 150 from last week that we don't have anywhere to send them. I think so, that's what's fascinating is you have more applicants than you do yes. salon owners. So we need to get the salon owners on board here because like, like I said, they get one free applicant anyways, it's free to sign up, right? It's not, Yep. yeah. Free registrations, yep. So free registration, once they get an applicant, they get that applicant for free or any applicant they decide. So everybody comes in, you can't see who they are, but you do, do get information about them. And then you can decide sort of on the snapshot if this is somebody you want to talk to about. And so it is just, it, it's a very advanced tool, but one of the nice things I designed it for salon owners to be able to kind of sit it and forget it, right? And just take applicants, be able to get applicants. And then if you, if things change, Let's say you get another location or just things change in your business. You can go in and edit it, but you don't have to edit anything. Kind of like, um, you know, I see a lot of it's a real pain in the ass to have to do job listings all the time. Right. And so I've sort of eliminated that need. And so you go in and you talk about yourself and that information stays put until you decide to change it. And it's always updated in real time. And so a lot of salon owners go through our process and answer our questions and they say, these are things that I really haven't thought through. And these are things that I'm going to be using in my job advertisements. And I said, well, that's really good because, you know, there is a lot that goes into hiring. There's a lot that goes into what makes up happiness, especially long term in a salon. And so, yep, that's Enlightened Hire. We keep all of our job listings on uh, our sister site, Salon Spot Connection, uh, reason being is it's got really great Google traction um, and it gives everybody a visual and it also allows us to recruit um, from people who are not in Enlightened Hire. So you're kind of getting them from both both sides. And so, you know, we're going to build an internal job board at some point, but right now there's not a need for it because we're just getting so much traction from that. And so, yeah, I, I absolutely love to be able to send salon owners, salon pros. And the fact is, is there's a lot of salon professionals that are lost mm, mm. a lot. And we get a lot that are lost. And I think one of the reasons is, is because um, as salon owners, we don't, we're not really trained on how to hire and how to recruit. And so, you know, a lot of these salon pros get into situations where they just have no idea what they're getting into. They don't even know 
what it is they want and what they need and what works best for them. And shame on the schools for not um, preparing them better for a career in the industry. I do think it starts at the school level. But as salon owners, you know, when we're hiring, it's a lot of feelings, right? It's like, oh, look, I've got a pretty salon. Oh, look, it's fun to work here. But that doesn't that does not translate. And so <laughs> a lot of there's a lot of pretty salons out there and, and it's fun to work in a lot of salons and it's not fun to work in a lot of salons. And so, uh, yeah, we do get there. There's one in particular I'm thinking about a barber from Fort Collins, Colorado. What a sweetheart. You know, he registered for our system and he is so totally eaten up and defeated by his work experience. And it's just heartbreaking. And, and this is not all that unusual. And so we definitely help, you know, that I, we see the majority of people we get are like that, right? They're like, oh my gosh, I've landed in the wrong place. I don't even know what to do. I'm thinking about leaving the industry. I love this. This is what I want to do. I want to work. I want to work. I need to find some place that values me and that I fit into. And I think that's what's so new about our industry because we, we're not like, we have not been trained like other industries, A, to not be emotional in the hiring. Like even you talking that notes here, talking about following up, you know, most people in the industry is like, ooh, they don't like me. I'm just not even I'm gonna leave that alone instead of really getting the feedback of why. Right. Making changes. It's just trying to get the beauty industry in the business mindset like other industries. That's it, really. It, and that's it. And and we have to go there. You know, it's it's just not working the way um, that we need it to work. And so we have to have more of that business mindset. You know, we've got to have that understanding and putting our feelings over here. You know, forget your feelings. Seriously, you need to understand what the perception is of your business, whether you accept that, whether you like that, it doesn't really matter. But you need to understand what people perceive. Because if you don't know and you don't know why um, you're not hiring or you don't know why you're turning people off, how in the world are you going to change it? I know. And I see all the time with like, but my salon is beautiful. I'm like, but what else are you doing for them? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There's I a lot it. of beautiful salons out there. I know. I know. Um, so I think everybody, in case everybody doesn't know that you are a sponsor in here at the Salon Owners Networking Group because you are a business that we know, like, and trust, and people can reach out to you, like Faye has said in the chat that she's interested in signing up. She's a VIP member. Awesome. So um, Faye, you can actually just message Susan right in the platform. So. Oh, thank you, Faye. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely here to help. And I, I just think that, you know, there's nobody else that has really focused on um, hiring and recruiting like I have um, on that kind of boots on the ground level, because you can you can look at it as an overview. You can look at it as a big corporation um, and that doesn't really help people. I think understanding what applicants want and they need and how they're finding opportunity that's the biggest, right? Like, cause I am a recruiter. So I'm always trying to understand um, how to get to applicants. And this is a journey. I mean, there's no like, oh, I've done it. I learned it's something every day. <laughs> it's ongoing, right? And ongoing. It's, it's just a different approach for the beauty industry. That's all, which I think is just awesome. Yes. And that's one of the things I failed to mention was that recruiting, there's never an end to recruiting and so always being in that mindset of hiring always being in that mindset of at least talking to people and getting applicants because one of the things i hear from salon owners um, when they get students in their dashboard right lots of students lots and lots and there's gonna be more and more <laughs> but um like well i'm not hiring students or i just hired a student that's fine you need to be talking to these people because what happens to students mm -hmm. they go and they work somewhere and a lot of times they end up leaving if they're not happy. So if you're not connected to that person, if they don't know about your business, if they don't know you, they're going to go somewhere else. Another salon owner who did say, I want to talk to this student. I want to build that relationship and create that awareness with this person. I forget the statistics too, but it's really high, the percentage of hairdressers that leave within the first three years. And I think it's because they just can't find the right place, the right fit. Yes. So I actually did a big survey and I surveyed 
what it was 10,000 plus just a quick survey on Facebook. How many, like for, for those of you in the industry, five years over, I just did a TikTok about this. And so I don't have this statistic right here, but I do know that, um, in the industry, this was really shocking to me, um, because I thought it would, I thought the numbers would be a little bit different. Um, for those people who have been in the industry five years or longer, um, that have worked in two or less salons, it's something like, 24 percent so to me that's very high mm -hmm. very high now i know some of the respondents were from small towns or they were legacy people right like their mom or their sister owned a salon so obviously that's the only salon they're going to work in but that i mean there's thousands of people in there and so to me what that said was there's a very high potential for salon owners to retain um, new grads and students if they understand how to foster that relationship. Now, 48% were in that four, I believe four to five zone, 48%. That sounds very accurate, right? Very, pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, and that's five years or more. So we don't know how long they've been in the industry. We just know that they have been in the industry for at least five years. But yeah, I thought that was super duper interesting. Yeah, that is crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I love what you're doing. That's there's no doubt about that. We all know. No secret there, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you're doing. I, I appreciate that you put this space together for salon owners where they're not being sold a bunch of shit, mm. you know? And I think that that's the biggest thing is having that space for community, having that space where they can actually trust somebody that is not going to just shove products and stuff down their throat. So kudos to you for providing that because that's not something else I've seen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we, I just talked about this morning, like we are just getting thrown things all the time. Everybody's a coach. Everybody's a consultant. Everybody's no. a new course, a new system, a new, and it's crazy. So to have people in here, and that's what I talked about was um, really handpicking the people who are in here as sponsors, because that's, you're here to better the business, better the beauty industry, yep. period, same. So to find those key people that that's really the drive behind what they do, that's who we want in here. And I will say, if you are in the Boston area, my buddy, Caitlin Albers, um, she's got an incredible program. I just think this app is super, super neat. It's called Ververy. And so that is also an app that you should be on, not only to um, hire, but to get new clients as well. And thank you to Kim for introducing us. Caitlin and I have become buddies and I just, I love her to pieces. And I think what she's doing is incredible. And so if you are in the Boston area, that's definitely also an app that you need to be on. Yeah, she's amazing. And that yeah. is the Salon Owners Networking Group, right? It's the power of connection and community. That's yep. it. Boom, we could leave right there. I know, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, I thank you for all of your time that you give the Salon Owners Networking Group here and off of here. We all know that. Um, I'm going to let Faye, you know, reach out to you so that she can get started with you. And anybody else can just reach out to you in here, message you awesome. or, yeah. Awesome. Thank you Thanks. so much, Kim. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks. Same. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming in and hanging out with us. We'll see you later. Bye.